Welcome to this video about equivalence testing for correlations with R and with Jamovi. First I give you a short summary what equivalence testing is about and then we look at how you can implement an equivalence test for correlations using Jamovi either as a standalone solution or in order to generate code you could run in R. So why equivalence testing? In many situations, in order to test a theory, you want to test whether there is no relationship between two variables, because the theory says those two constructs are not related to each other. How can you do that? One traditional approach would be to run the correlation, and if it's not significant, claim that as evidence in favor of your hypothesis. This approach is wrong, because a not significant result is not a proof that there is no effect. The alpha error only protects the other conclusion, falsely concluding that there is an effect. But this conclusion, concluding there is no effect if you don't have a significant result, is not protected by the alpha error. It can just be a power issue, that your sample size isn't large enough to find an effect. So the next question is, maybe there's a specific test to prove that the correlation between two variables is zero. Unfortunately, that's not possible for theoretical reasons. You can't prove that a correlation is equal to zero. But there is a partial solution. You don't test whether a correlation is equal to zero, but whether it is equivalent to zero. In equivalence test, you set boundaries for equivalence. That is, you decide what the smallest effect size of interest is. And if you can prove that the effect in your sample is significantly smaller than this smallest effect size of interest, you decide that the result is equivalent to zero. Not equal to zero, but equivalent to zero. So you set an upper bound and a lower bound for the correlation. And correlations between those two boundaries for you are too small to really care about, so that those are for you equivalent to zero. There are two possibilities to test this, which lead to the same result. The first one is called TOST, two one-sided tests or two one-tailed tests. So here we run two tests. We test whether the correlation is significantly lower than this upper bound. And the second test, we test if the correlation is significantly higher than the lower bound. And if both tests turn out to be significant, we know that the correlation lies in between those two bounds and is equivalent to zero. The second possibility, we construct a 90% confidence interval for the correlation and check whether it lies inside the equivalence boundaries. This is a 90% confidence interval, and in this case, it lies between those two boundaries, and this leads to exactly the same result as those two one-sided tests. And in this case here, we would have shown equivalence because the confidence interval lies between those boundaries. The most important decision to make if you run an equivalence test is choosing the boundaries, that is specifying what is the smallest effect size of interest. There are many considerations that should go into such a decision. A good overview over the possibilities there is given in this article by Lakens, Scheel and Isara. A link to the article is in the description of the video. Now I'll be showing you how to run an equivalence test for correlations with Jamovi and after that how to use this in order to produce code for R to run an equivalence test. Jamovi of course is an open source statistics package based on R. You will find a download link in the description. And Jamovi has a specific package for running equivalence tests, Tosta. It's not part of the standard Jamovi, so if you install Jamovi you have to install this additional module Modules, Jamovi Library, and under Available, you'll see all the additional packages you can install. Here's Toster. In my case, it shows Installed. In your case, there would be Install. If you cl click on that, you get the equivalence test capabilities for Jamovi. Here I have a small example data set, and I want to test whether the correlation between age and contact is equivalent to zero. So I go to Tost Correlation. I click on the two variables for which I want to test the correlation. 
Here are the equivalence bounds. Those are the default values. You have to change them for the values that apply to your specific problem. Here's the alpha level and I would choose the option plots. Let's look at the results. In the upper part we'll find the first possible way to test for equivalence. Here's the correlation and its p-value, so we don't have a significant correlation. That's neither necessary nor sufficient to show equivalence. The equivalence test is based on the next two lines. Here's the test against the upper equivalence bound. It's significant, so we know our correlation is lower than the upper bound. And here's the test against the lower bound, and it's significant too. So we also know that the correlation is higher than the lower equivalence bound. And since both those tests are significant, we have shown that the correlation is equivalent to zero based on the boundaries we've set. The second way to test for equivalence is the confidence interval. Here we have the 90% confidence interval, and we're seeing it lies completely within those two boundaries. So we get the same result. We have shown equivalence. And the third option, we look at the plot, which in a way is just an implementation of the second approach to show equivalence. We have the 90% confidence interval, and we have the boundaries, and we see that the confidence interval lies completely within the boundaries. In addition, we could print the descriptive statistics, but for correlations, I think it's not that meaningful. With Jamovi, you could run equivalence tests for other testing situations. That is a two-sample t-test, the paired sample t-test, the one-sample t-test, and two proportions. That's beyond the scope of this video. And now we want to see how we can use this in order to get our code for equivalence testing. Jamovi has the nice property that you can get R code for all the analyses you're running. You go to the Jamovi options up there and check syntax mode. And up here you get R syntax that you can run with R or R Studio or something like that. But there are two important details. First, in R this code uses the package toster. So the first time you want to run it, you have to install it. And each session you want to run it, you have to load it with the library command. The second important thing, you have to define which data you use. And your data frame has to be in here. There are two possibilities. Let's say you have loaded your data in a data frame called tossed data. You could ju just assign that to data before running this short code. Or you could change data on the right hand side of this operation to the name of your data frame, toss data. And then you can run it, and then you get those results you're seeing here. So it's a very comfortable way to produce R code. If you want to write the R code yourself, let's have a short look at it. Here you have to put in your data. If you have just one correlation, you have to change those two names for the two variables you want to correlate. This here produces the descriptive results, and this gives you the plot. If you want to change the alpha error, then you have to put in this command in order to change it from its default values of 0.05. And if you want to change the equivalence bounds, those are the two commands to do that. If you want to know more about the toaster package for R, in the description of the video I give you a link to its documentation. I hope this has been helpful for you. You'll find my other statistics tutorials with a link in the description.